Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of uh, True North Self-Directed Learning Talks. And um, today I am speaking with my dear friend, Hadley Holka. And Hadley and I have known each other for some years now. And Hadley is um, one year older than my daughter, who's also um, a lifelong self-directed learner. And that's how we met, was that we were, um, our families were on the same path of learning um, freely with our children. And so it's been a delight to know Hadley and watch her and my daughter. They're growing up and they're becoming young adults at this point. So lots of exciting things happening for you at this time in your life. And it's, um, you know, it's just such a rich journey to be on with one's child uh, when we're practicing self-directed learning as a family. And I'm excited to hear more about um, your journey and how it's been for you. So um, would you like to just introduce yourself to, to our community and, and uh, let us know um, just maybe some of those earlier childhood memory experiences of, of self being a self-directed learner? Okay, hi. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Hadley. I am also a lifelong uh, homeschooler, unschooler, self-directed learner. We, we use all the terms um, in my family. Um, my mom always intended to homeschool me. Um, she pretty much modeled her, our, her teach the way she taught off of her own college experience. She went to um, CCS at UCSB. And there- Which is, uh, uh, a CCS it's the is- it's, it's the College of Creative Studies and she got her um, first degree in English literature there. And then she went on to get her master's degree at Mills College. Um, and then she became a professor uh, and then she, uh, stopped she stopped teaching after she had me because she knew she wanted to be a mom and she wanted to guide my own education and basically at CCS you studied the, your, the so the classes that you had they were all very small from what I what I understand from what she's told me they were all very small it was a lot of one on one with the professors um and you would go in depth, like very, 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 very in depth um, into one subject for like a good chunk of time. And that is pretty much how she has taught me. Um, our form of self-directed learning basically follows my interests and my passions. I know it differs from family to family, but for me, for, for our family, um, theater was kind of the thing everything circulated around because I'm an actress and that's that's my thing I like Shakespeare I like books I like theater mm -hmm. I also like art yeah, I'm, yeah it's a very we have we're a very artsy family and um we also we also like science love because my, my dad's a scientist and my um, grandfather was a chemist um but basically what we would do is whenever there's something someone in neither my little sister because I have I also have a little sister who's also unschooled or um whatever either of us are interested in at a point in our life we take the time to really study it for instance when I was 12 and I, I still I still have carried this with me um, I was very very much into fairy tales and so we started this giant project on well how do fairy tales originate? What is the, what was the original story? And for a lot of, a lot of the stories, actually, there was another story they came from. And reading about them, it was interesting to see that a lot of the old stories were told to teach a lesson or to have a, some sort of warning. They were used as mo more of moral tales than the cute, fluffy entertainment that we, we have today. And a lot of them are much darker, very, very, very dark. Um, but we studied that for, I wanna say, I wanna say, say like the, the, the amount of in-depth study, it was, it, was, it was at least, it was at least, it was somewhere around like four to six months. And, um, I did actually, I did a presentation board at 
my I was part of a homeschooling group at that time. It was called uh, H O I. I think H O A L H A L. I don't remember exactly what it was called, but I um I've been a part of it since I was wee. And uh, we would have a um, history fair, and it was um, tr I, I think it was called Trip Through Time, and everyone would have these giant. You've seen like the giant poster boards at um, dollar stores and whatnot craft stores um, and we would well we'd have those and we would decorate them with some sort of whatever time period we wanted to study and so that particular that particular year I did the history of fairy tales and the original stories compared with the stories today and I tied in at that point um, we had come across a tv series called once upon a time which is where they take fairy tales and they retell them and they kind of blend them all together and so we incorporated that. And um, since then, I've still I've still continued to study them. I now like to write my own. I like to take certain elements of different tales and then uh, blend them together. But yeah, that is I think the gist, the 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 basic idea of um, how my education went. Yeah. So you just followed uh, your interests as they evolved over time and um and i know that you do a lot of writing along with um a lot of a lot of acting and and theater is just such an amazingly rich field i mean you learn so much by being in the theater uh, in just so many different ways and, uh, like what are, what are some of the things you think that you really um just helped really you grow into the person that you are um, by being involved with theater and having the freedom to dive into it that freely and, and to that extent. Um, well, I think I definitely, I think the main thing is I always had my mom at my back. She was there to defend me from stage moms because theater business is crazy. I love it, but the backstage stuff is crazy. Um, I had the space to explore what I was interested in, to test things, and to figure stuff out on my own. Like I knew, I knew my mom was always there. It, my mama was there if I if I needed her, and um, she, of course, she was the one who found who found theater for me. I would I would not I would not have been in. Um, I would not have discovered acting without her. I was six when I took my first official theater class because before that I had done um, kids and dance, which combined theater and dance. And um, I did a production of Molly through them. But my first official children's theater class was when I was six and it was The Wizard of Oz. And the first day I came out and I looked at my mom and I said, this is what I want to do with the rest of my life. This is what I want to do. And my mama was like, okay, that's, we will continue to do this. And of course she didn't, I was six, I was little. Little kids change their ideas all the time of what they want to be. Before that, I was really into space and I wanted to be an astronaut and I liked dance, so I wanted to be a ballerina at some point. But anyway, so I, an actress. Lots of little kids say they want to be an actress. So she, my mama was like, okay, you're interested in theater. I will drive you to and from. We were in uh, San Francisco, so traffic is hectic. It's like two hours, but she, she found different theater companies for me. And if one didn't work, she would drive two hours to find a place that did work for me. Um, and then when I started doing professional theater when I was nine, that is when she kind of realized, oh, oh, she's serious. She is very serious about this is this is the craft she wants to do. And so she started taking me and she, oh, she would wait. She would wait in the car for hours. And this Lily was here at this time. So she's a newborn baby. So my mom would wait for like for professional shows rehearsals can be anywhere from like 
three hours to you have the long like 10 hour all day rehearsals but typically they run between like three to five hours and she would wait in the car with a newborn and then a one-year-old and then a two-year-old and she got that I was passionate about this and she got she got a lot of flack from all the other parents about well how what about her sleep schedule you keep her up until 10 o'clock at night and then you get home at 11 and then you let her sleep until 12 like how is she gonna like that's that's insane that's insane why are you driving for two hours and then spending five hours in the car but my mom saw that theater was something that really made me who I was and made me happy and fulfilled my soul. As cliche as that sounds, I know that sounds so like. Um, but she, you know, that something that stands out to me when you were um, kind of sharing about that is that, you know, your mom took you seriously, you know, like you did. I think well, that um, it's easy in our culture, you know, to like you said, oh, kids are just interested in that and the other thing. It's just, it just doesn't really mean anything. We know as adults what's the most important and we're gonna direct them to those things that we know are the most important. And it's usually not dance, acting or art. You know? Yes, well, <laughs> right. that's the thing about self-directed learning is the parent listens to the kid and it's not a listen to the kid as you give the kid whatever they want and you let them eat candy and play the the xbox games is that what they're called the, yeah, the, xbox, the, the, the things yeah that <laughs> yeah those games like it's not it's not like that it's you see oh you're interested in theater oh you're interested in drawing and art oh you like to sew oh you're really my little sister is really into animals and marine biology you're into you're into animals let me find you a class or a person or a group of people who are also interested in this and who can help guide you to learn more about it and you have to be open I feel you have to be prepared for if your kid is like nope I don't want to do this to be like okay we'll find you something else um because if the kid know, if your child knows that they are able to decide what they want to do, it helps them, it gives them more resources and it helps them figure out that they have more options. And there, I don't know, and again, I don't know if this is true for every child, but for me, knowing that my mama really supported my theater um it allowed me to pursue it to the full length um we also there was financial stuff for us so things were really tight so it very much was a choice do you love theater enough that you want to spend all the mo this money on this and that you want to spend all these hours and all this time And I did, I did, like, it was, I mean, I don't, I, I don't remember it ever actually coming up in conversation, that conversation of, this is a lot of money, Hadley, are you, are you okay, are you sure, are you sure this is what you want to do, because this is a lot of money, it was just, it was just, the, I don't, I don't know how to explain that part of it, like that, um, I guess, I mean, I guess that's another part of unschooling is you are with your parents a lot of the time. So whatever they're going through, whatever they're shopping, whether they're shopping, whether they're um, figuring out their budgeting, whether they're cooking in, in the kitchen, you are there, you're present for that, you are learning by exposure. Mm -hmm. you're, you, um, I, I do know how to economize because I've seen, I've seen how my parents budget. I've seen how my mom saves for things. I am very, 
I feel myself when I go into a store, I go, well, that's, that, 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 that dress is pretty. It's $20. That's a lot. You know, I could find something similar to that at a thrift store, or I could find something that I liked better, or I could make it for less. Um, and especially I feel like with things like cooking, I don't, I don't know, so much of self of homeschooling, and I'm going to use homeschooling as the, my term here because it just it, 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 it um, involved all homeschooling. Yeah. Um, so much of it is just being around your parents and what they're doing and you learn. That's where the r real life learning comes from is you are, you are, you're learning how to behave in the real world. Mm -hmm. I'm learning okay, maybe I don't want to be in a grocery store for an hour. But my mom can't get a babysitter for me. She can't afford it because I'm doing theater. So I'm going to wait patiently and I'm going to walk with her or if I'm waiting in the car while she runs into a store. Um, I will read, I will read my book. I will, actually my mom, my mama and I were, uh, were talking about this um, just today, uh, about how important it is that kids learn to wait. And it's not, it's not so much that we teach them how to wait, we make them wait. It's just that through homeschooling, it comes so naturally because waiting is just a natural part of life. Mm -hmm. And in that time when you're waiting, you find other things to do. Like I, I can bring my homework in the car um, and I can work on some projects. I can draw. I do a lot of my drawing in the car. You can read a book. I know I've spent many a two hour drive finishing a novel <laughs> or um, my first year of high school, actually, I needed to, well, in my case, it was reread, but I needed to read Hamlet. And so I grabbed our copy off the shelf and I read it actually in our car as we took our trip up to Disneyland. And I just, I, 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 did, I did my homework. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of, you don't necessarily have, you don't have a normal schedule, mm -hmm. but you still, you, you still learn how to, get things done if that does that make yeah. any sense well it feels to me like you're a um, couple of things I'm noticing you talking about right now is like one you know how much your your parents have your back and how good that feels and how supported family the family life is by choosing self-directed learning or homeschooling because you are together more and that allows you to cultivate a really um you know deep relationship because yeah if you are around each other a lot, then, then you're gonna figure out how to live together in ways that, that feel good to everybody. Um, I feel like that's one of the biggest benefits for, for me um, of having raised uh, an unschooler is that we got to, to you know, really spend her childhood together, which to me is absolutely invaluable. And um, I feel like it just contributes so much to the health of the family um, and, by you know through the ripple effect that that's contributing to the health of the society at large that um that families are healthy and connected and um you know so for me that's been one of the, the major gifts and then the other thing you were talking about of of um you know like learning to wait and finding your own way of making your way through the day and the schedule and uh, of just how your unique schedule is day to day um, as a unschooling family, um, yeah, that yeah, that um, that makes me think about you know, you were you have space to to follow your own impulse of what do you want to find to fill in this time with like it's it's not um, looking to the outside uh, you know structures to tell you what you're going to do next. It's more like oh, I have this next um, two hours. 
hmm, you know, what do, what do I want to choose to, how do I want to choose to use this time? You know, and you choose the book off the shelf that you're going to spend the next two hours with. And it's like that, it, it seems like such a minor thing when you just talk about one example, but um, it seems to me that um, every day, you know, over and over again for years on end through your childhood, choosing little choices each day. How do I want to spend my time now? What what will fulfill me now? What is what is the thing I need to take care of now? Uh, you know, what is the thing that I need to respond to because my family has this need now? You know, that all those little decisions that are coming from your the inside of you in response to your environment. Um, you know, th that really builds a sense of, that uh, builds a, a very strong character in a person, a person who knows who they are and who knows how to be present to their life and to their family and to like follow what, what your interests are and know that you can do it. And that's, as a parent of an unschooler, like that's what I look at you. I look at all of the young people that are working for True North right now, because um, Hadley is one of our facilitators. Um, and I just, you know, other when I speak to other parents in the True North community about you guys, because they'll they'll talk to me about you guys, saying, "Gosh, they're just so they so know who they are," you know, and that 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 that's that's it, you know. For what I see for unschoolers is that you just really have grown into people that at at such a young age already are very connected. Well, and you never lost that connection, you know. You are very connected to yourself because you never lost it. No one ever. Um, told you to spend 10 hours a day paying attention to other stuff other than uh you know what you actually were interested in so yeah. right um and going back to what you said before about um connection with your parents and especially at least in my family with my mama uh so we she not only unschooled me she also at both attachment parented and did gentle parenting um and for those of you watching who don't know what attachment parenting is, that is basically where you co-sleep with your child, you nurse them, you oh, carry them around, you're making sure the two of you are very connected. I, for one, I was, um, I was, I, I nursed until I was, I believe, four and a half. My mother had to, um, bribe me with a vegan cake to um get me to stop it's a very funny story I, I, heather i think you've heard the story before right um i think we've, we've but, talked about the long nursing time yes. that's yeah i um, that's my experience too and it's yeah it's been, it's it's the bonding that happens through that experience it's is really beautiful and of course it's different for every mother and child relationship it, but, of course yeah. and there are other ways to get that safe. If you're unable to nurse, there are other ways to replicate that same um, bond. Yeah. Um, but I think one of the reasons my mama and I are so close is because we spent, you know, four years and I, she held me and it was a, it was, it, it's, it's a, not an event. It's a, was it what, what I, I can't think of the word for event that's it's it's um I mean it is kind of an event it's something that you're doing it's um and she would I remember I actually do remember uh she would while well, we nursed she would read the alphabet to me except she did not read late later she put the names of the letters in but she started by doing the sounds of the letters so I identified the letters by sound. And I still do actually when I see letters. I don't go, oh, that's an A. I go, oh, ah, that is the sound that the A makes. So I, um, by doing that, she actually allowed me to, when I looked, when I looked at a word, I was able to sound it out because I knew the sounds of the letters. So I actually started reading when I was a little younger than one. I don't I don't remember a time when I didn't know how to read. Um, and it's it's something I actually would advise a lot of parents who have babies to do just because you're not 
turning it into this big thing because I know I know reading is a very scary thing for some unschoolers but if you just when you're a baby start just with the sounds it becomes a normal thing because you just you see the letters and you associate the sound with them so then when you read a word like crab you sound it out when you're reading it because you're reading each letter with the sound so you're mm -hmm. you're reading um and also again my, my my mom used to teach english literature so um i also don't remember a time when i didn't have books in my life i grew up listening to jane austen oh sorry i'm on my ipad and it keeps it's very old so it keeps like blinging things to me and i'm like yeah no problem i like I'm trying to talk <laughs> um, but yes yeah, so he was back. an unschooler too yeah well back to back to books and reading um i've i don't remember a time when i didn't know who jane austen was or what her books were just because i had grown up um watching the movies and listening to the stories when my mom would read them to me i was baby i was baby harry at the release of the sixth book it was very cute um so harry potter again is also something that's always been in my life a uh, four-year-old hermione granger at the release of the seventh harry potter book um shakespeare when i was little i had oh usborne books great they're a British company. They do, I believe they also have kid versions of the, all the Jane Austen books. They do all of the Shakespeare stories with fun stickers and characters and oh, they're, they're so delightful. I, I still love them. I still love them. They have history. They're a great, they're a great resource for any, any homeschooling family. Um, but I had, I had the kitty version of all of the Shakespeare book stories all of his plays so again i don't remember a time when i didn't have some idea of who shakespeare was i started performing in his plays i played um peace blossom when i was eight so that was like my first formal introduction to um acting in shakespeare and then i was lucky enough to when i did 12th night the first time when i was 13. i had the best oh, she was the best director i'm still very good friends with her and actually she wrote um uh, my letter of recommend one of my letters of recommendation to the colleges i applied to so we're still very good friends um she was my director for 12th night and i was playing viola and she had played viola before so she worked with me a lot and i just remember she kind of opened my eyes to oh my gosh wait this is Shakespeare this is acting in Shakespeare like I loved it before I liked it it was fun I, I liked my musicals a little bit better because you know I'd been doing musicals since I was like four I was I'd been doing professional ones since I was nine I was I was a musical theater kid but this was like my introduction to this is how good Shakespeare can be when you're acting in it and I was like, I was hooked. I was hooked. That's that's what I want to do now is mm -hmm. I want to be a Shakespearean actress. And so that's um, what you're continuing to get. That's what you're going to um, study in college. Is that? Yeah, well, I am going to major in theater. And then my hope is to go on and I would like to get a master's degree in Shakespeare studies um, in England. And then I'll go wherever, go wherever the wind takes me with that. <laughs> Follow the path. Life. So, so you're such a creative person, Hattie. You, I mean, you, you, you write a lot. You are an artist. You are a musician. Um, I, I actually, I have a story about writing. Can yeah. I, can I, can I, okay. <laughs> so I had actually never written an essay until my freshman year of high school. So I had talked to my mom about books and I could, I could, I, we could, we could talk about them. Um, I had written stories. I was part of a little writing group. So I wrote a lot of stories. Um, 
and we wrote papers together where I would orally tell her like what the what the story was and she would type it up um or I would write I would sit with her and write it down but I had never written a formal high school essay and I learned in my first year of high school I sat down and I learn the basics it's basically you state something you explain it you explain it you explain it and then there's a to wrap up what i've said and it's 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 an interesting formula um i can i can think of a what ways i prefer to write um but i i learned that formula and then I figured out how to meld my own writing voice because I have a very distinct, like, this is the way I write. Um, um, I learned how to incorporate that and keep that in the standard essays that I had to write for high school. Um, and that just came from, again, talking about books. I under I understood what I was writing, I was, I was basic, because I was basically the conversations I have about like Romeo and Juliet, or Pride and Prejudice, or my, my feelings about Ophelia. I just, it's it, basically, I'm just writing down the conversation I would have if I were to explain to someone why Romeo and Juliet is indeed a very tragic love story, no matter how many people try to convince you it's just two dumb teenagers who fall in love and then kill everyone like it, it's not it's a tragic love story about a 13 year old and a older teenager they're two kids they fall in love there are circumstances about them that make it so they can't be together and then out of desperation they act very impulsively and very rashly i, I do i do admit that the decisions that they made were not great ones <laughs> But that was because of the impossible circumstance they were in. Mm -hmm. And like, that's where the tragedy comes from. It was because of all the fighting and it was because their parents wouldn't, they, they could not be together without ruining their families. And I mean, Juliet, they wanted to marry her off to someone else and they were prepared to cast her to the street if mm -hmm. they had refused. Yeah. Or if, when she refused, when she refuses and I was like, I don't want to marry Paris. They're like, okay go goodbye there's the door go to the street you're not my child anymore and it's yeah it's it's, it's hard make anyone out it. desperately Ex exactly like yeah. a, when when you think about it that way so a, you know um yeah that that's definitely I, I saw that with elsa too um my daughter that it starts with verbalizing and talking a lot about things and then that just translates very smoothly into being able to write about things so that's a really powerful example of of how um unschooling works you know so yes. naturally it just flows Elsa, one into okay. the next yeah and Elsa's also a storyteller so that's which I, I find a lot of kids that are um in self-directed learning um uh, you know pathways in life that they that they, you, know, you guys are very good at using your voice, which is because you actually get to use your voice a lot. <laughs> yeah, no, we're, you know, we're so no one's telling you to be quiet in class, right? So, um, so yeah, you know, as we're we're kind of coming to the end of our hour or so here. Um, I mean, we're, we're not we're more like at forty five, but just to to uh, I wanted to get to a couple of other things, um, and just to kind of wrap up where we've been, you know that that you through your lifetime you never went to um a brick and mortar school when you were talking about being in high school that's like you doing oh, yes. Yes, courses that, by choice at, at yeah. home right yeah the, so this um when i started getting when i got into eighth grade um education always has been a very important thing in my family and I, yeah yeah i really ipad no can you still hear me yes yeah. We, okay, we really, I'm just going to keep talking then. So basically, um, when I was in eighth grade, I realized, well, not I realized, I knew, I always knew I wanted to go to college, but we realized that while we had 
all of this amazing stuff we had done and I had learned a lot about history and I had all of these these projects that we had done we didn't have like a normal record of this so we decided to enter a charter school for multiple reasons um, one was we would have the state keeping track of everything we had done and they would be saying hey you have an a you're graduating high school and it would be the state of california giving their stamp of approval so if any colleges were like oh well i'm not sure about that it would be like no 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 we have proof we have proof and the other reason is uh, we get funding so i can take all the classes i want and get all the resources that i need like we get a lot of art supplies i get tons of fabric i do guitar lessons i do a lot of shakespeare classes i actually this it's very messy i'm sorry i'm sorry people but um this beautiful thing of embroidery um because i do a lot of embroidery we got through the funding they gave us um but yes i decided i decided i wanted to enroll in a charter school and basically i just they assigned me a as a, a, an es uh, an education specialist and she just looks over the war i'm given a a to, I, I chose to do an a to g course because that's what all the high school all the high schools do so i was given these subjects that i had to learn but i could learn them in any way i wanted so we applied our self-directed learning and unschooling and project-based learning because that's mainly what we do is i do a lot of projects we applied that to um, the subjects and my parents said, we give this an A and my, uh, my uh, charter school teacher goes, I like that, that's an A. And then the state goes, cool, you have all A's. Um, so my transcripts for college, my, um, mid-year grades and then my um graduation all are from the state and we just we chose that because we thought that would be the easiest path to go to college that's not the only path you can you can do lots of other things i know city college is a thing um you can write your own transcripts and handle that by yourself um but we just wanted a, an extra just in case Mm -hmm. um and so that a, a, a little cushion you. of powder pat, patting yeah. um so so you um so you never went to conventional school you and so you you guys just made your way through um through your entire childhood up through 18 years old uh studying in the way that you chose to um with a lot of familial support and um uh, really just um it sounds like feeling very seen and heard by your parents and, and having that kind of um, support in your life really helped you to develop fully all your skills that you that you um, have at this point. And like I was saying, you're, you know, you're a writer, you're a musician, you're an artist, you're an actress, a, a singer, uh, many skills. And, um, and so now now you're you you're wrapping up your senior year right and I am. Um, and and you've been um applying for colleges and i want to tell us a little bit about what that what that's i know a lot of people that on school are wondering you know what what if my kid does want to go to colleges what's that process like and um so how has that been for you um it has it's been a learning curve um i ha i used an app so i don't know and for those of you with little kids i do not know how it will be when your your kiddos graduate but for me um the majority of colleges i was applying to had a were using the this app called common app and i believe it's short for common application but it also might not be a pun on the fact that it's an app that you can put on your phone um but uh basically rather than write a different essay for every single college you apply to 
you just have to write one essay. And then you're given an, an optional essay to um, also write about your experience uh, with COVID and the pandemic because we just went through a lot. Um, but so you have two, you have two standard, basically two standard essays that all the colleges will see. And then each college has their own questions that they ask you and it ranges from anywhere from like one to like, I think a couple of them I applied to had three or four and I, I saw one I didn't end up applying to had I think like 10. <laughs> um, but so you still you still do write for each for um, specific smaller essays for each college and those range anywhere from like 200 to 500 words but the one big one that I think I think it was a 650 I don't know I just remember I had to cut it down from my original thing um your 650 essay which is your introductory essay it tells them about you um they it it, it it makes it easier a lot of colleges were very interested about my my schooling experience and the way self-directed learning works um which was both surprising and not surprising like i was expecting to get um questions about how well how were you schooled how did you learn this um but i was not expecting people to be so interested in the specifics about the way I learned like well how did you learn your physics well I was we were talking about I had to learn about Newton's laws of motion and so we piled into our car and we rode down in our town there's this big hill and we uh we drove we rode down the hill in neutral and talked about um uh, friction and uh, gravity and um, acceleration and um, I calculated our theoretical speed at the bottom of the hill and we compared it to the real speed um, and then we talked about what real life factors might have influenced our speed our real our real speed for instance it was really windy so we went a lot faster then my uh, calculations had us going. Um, and so they were really interested in that. And I think, I think the most important thing about when you apply for college is to focus on all the little interesting things that you've done, even if it doesn't seem, even if it doesn't seem like it matters like that that one that one project is something i've been telling all uh, all of my colleges about because they're all like whoa that's really cool um just because it's interesting and it's different of course i also have i do have bigger projects that i've done like i'm, I'm a girl scout so i'm working on my gold award and i am creating a curriculum based around women in history because aside from theater and art and music I have a lot of passions. Um, history is one of my passion and specifically women in history. Um, like, and there are a lot of women who people don't know about like Rosalind Franklin, um, who was uh, a scientist in, I think the 19th, she, she, she was the one who originally discovered DNA and then her work was stolen from her by two guys and then they got the credit for it. Um, my sis little sister actually told me about her. And then Sybil Luddington, who was the 16 year old girl during the American Revolution. And she rode for 40 miles in the night to warn her father and his troops that the British Redcoats were coming. And then there's uh, actually, who I, I think, I think she is the first scientist because she's from the Middle Ages. Um, Mariah Marion, who was this 13 year old little girl, and she she studied bugs because I don't know if you know this, but um, people used to think that the little insects were um, demons 
and could turn people into witches. Yeah, they had they had they had lots of they have lot had lots and lots of theories about what bugs were. Um, and she she studied them. She took them. She she would take them home, and she would study. She studied how caterpillars turned into butterflies. And basically she figured out what bugs actually were. And so she was, she was the first scientist and she was this kid. She was this little, like she was a year older than my little sister. She was a kid. Um, um, and we don't, we don't know about these girls. So I, I, I wanted to um, have other, I have other uh, people know about them. So I, I'm writing, I'm writing a curriculum and I'm going to teach a class. Um, so of course, colleges were also interested in that. So um, it's it's a mix of the little things and the big things, if that makes sense, like figuring out, I don't know, just, just having all of your passions out there. Mm -hmm. And And that, that it, it, it does, I think it, I know for me, one of the things um, self-direct learning really helped with is I've spent a lifetime working with adults, being around with adults. So I've learned to talk to adults. Um, so with the interview portions, it came really naturally and easily. Mm -hmm. um, which I think I think is something that homeschoolers are lucky to get because um, will we learn it at a young age? Yeah, certainly. I, I that's something I hear a lot. Um, again, you know, when I talk to other parents or adults about about unschoolers in particular, that they'll say, "Oh, they're so well spoken," and they, you know, and 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 you know, in my past when I have worked with groups of children that were either unschoolers or kids in conventional school it was really um, not not 100% of the time, of course, true, because nothing's ever 100% of the time true, but um, but it was just as a general statement, you know, that kids that were um, unschooled would just be much more comfortable speaking with people of all ages and not having any hesitancy about that. And I imagine that it, when you're speaking to the colleges, you know, the, the people on the board of admissions or whatever, that they are probably um, one of the very first things they would notice about you is, is you're, you're, well, you're just well-spoken and comfortable with yourself around anybody. And um, that's actually not, you know, how every 18 year old is, right? No, it's not. Um, I, I think for a lot of kids coming out of high school, they're figuring out who they are and that's what they use their early 20s for is to figure out, well, I just spent four, I mean, if you start in middle school, it's what, hang on, seven years? When does middle school start? Is that when you're like 13? It depends on if it, yeah. 12? In your right, community, I don't know. if it's sixth okay. or seventh grade. But <laughs> okay, you spent like seven, eight years around people who are mean and don't let you be yourself you it, it, it seem, they seem they seem very um I don't know it, it seems it seems it seems like I don't, I don't even I don't even know how to describe what I I I say it seems it seems very much like they like to suck the individuality out of each person I mean but I also I I know I don't know I, I know it's not true for all kids because I, I do have I do have theater friends who are in school and they seem yeah interesting theater is, something so, that theater so theater is a different a completely different thing but it um I think they've spent a huge portion of their lives losing who they were and so they have to rediscover that um and as you I, I, you said this before as as um self directed learners we we never went through that. Yeah, you stayed um, close to yourself the whole time and 
and that shows as you're becoming a young adult it's just you have a presence that's really palpable and so the colleges obviously noticed that and um we're interested in your story which is great to hear i i've, I've certainly been hearing that um increasingly over the years that colleges are more and more interested in kids that haven't um, been in conventional schooling because of all the reasons we're talking about. Yeah. Um, and uh, and it sounds like your experience kind of confirmed that for. Yeah, for no, I, um, I actually I got into my first choice college and mm -hmm. I am uh, they invited me to be a part of their honors program. Fantastic. I'm pretty psyched <laughs> about. Yeah. So um, now your your parents can just say, see, we we yeah. are right to make this decision. <laughs> well, yeah, no, and it for for all you parents who are either just starting with the self-directed learning process or are thinking about homeschooling your kids, it it seems really scary. And it it definitely it can feel like a gamble and there can be times where you're like oh my goodness i don't i don't know if this is if this is gonna work but it it is worth it because by the end you will it it, it just it's it's worth it you'll have a you'll have a good connection with your kids and they'll they'll know who they are and what they want in the world. And I think that's really, that's really important. Yeah. Well, that, on that note, <laughs> that's, that's a fantastic place to, to, I think, leave it. Is there any, anything else you want to add as we, as we close our conversation for now? Uh, no, not that, not that I can think of. Um, yeah. I'll just echo that, that, I mean, the, the connection within the family and then the connection that you see within the individual who has been uh, supported to uh, learn in this way is that everybody, everything is connected still. The person is connected to themselves, the family is connected, and um, you know to have the relationship with self and family and your passions, all of those connections intact when you arrive at young adulthood, it's just a massive gift. And I see all of you young people who have, um, you know, learned in this way, just blossoming as you all along the way, but certainly at this time where you're coming into young adulthood and it's just such, uh, um, you know, it's, it's healing for us adults who didn't get to grow up that way to watch you doing it. And it's, um, I'm just, um, so touched to see all of you guys living your life with heart and passion and being such awesome people. <laughs> so thank you, Hattie, for, for this conversation. It's been fantastic getting a chance me. To, to talk to you. And um, I look forward to future conversations. Maybe we'll get your mom on here and we'll have a good- Oh yeah, no, she has, she's, 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 <laughs> great. Uh, yeah, I, I, will, I will, I'll talk to her about that. Yeah, we could have, um, um, Elsa and me and you and your mom and have a have a another good long talk. Yeah, that would oh, be we could fun. go on for hours. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, bye for now. Bye. bye, everybody. Thanks for listening. See you next time.